How easy is it to beat Pokemon Red if everything is mono grass type? Ponyta is now a grass type. Rattata is now a grass type. Weeping Bell is now only a grass type. If you watched my first video in this series, you know that I've already made everything rock type. I chose to make everything grass type in this run because defensively, they're almost the exact opposite. Where rock is weak to water, grass, ground, and fighting, grass is resistant to water, grass, ground, and electric. And where rock resists fire, poison, flying, and normal, grass is weak to fire, poison, flying, ice, and bug. So right off the bat, we can see grass might be a bit more challenging than rock was. The only two special types super effective against grass are ice and fire, neither of which are very common. I mean, I can always pick up ice beam, but as a side note, I'm thinking about making it a rule where I can only use TMs given to me by gym leaders. I don't know, I'm still deciding on that one. Anyways, poison and flying are pretty common, but both being physical types, will they be able to stand up against the defensive walls like Cloyster and Onyx? So how easy is it to beat Pokemon Red if everything is a mono grass type? Let's get into it. I chose Charmander as my starter and named the spicy little lizard Pepper. I went with Charmander because it learns Ember early on at level nine, being my go-to against Pokemon weak in the special stat. To help out on the physical side, I catch a Spearow to the west of Viridian City and I forget to nickname it. So I catch another one and since it's a flying plant grass type thing, I name it Flytrap. <laughs> Get it, fly. <laughs> I stayed to the west of Viridian for a bit, leveling up Spearow until it's about on par with Charmander, and at this point, I think I'm set on my team. The Charmander line for fast special attacks, and the Spearow line for fast physical attacks. But then I get up to Viridian Forest, and I decide we're catching a Weedle, and I use the same logic I used when catching Mankey in the Rock Only run. I'm probably never going to unironically use a B-Trill in a series run, so if not now, win. So I set about to catch a Weedle, and after encountering four Metapods and Charmander learning Ember, I finally catch a Weedle and name it Daisy. Daisy is really nice in the early game in that it can poison everything. One thing to note in this run, Poison Sting is effectively 30 base power. It's normally 15 base power, but since everything is grass type, Poison Sting, along with all other fire, poison, flying, bug, and ice type moves, will always hit for super effective damage, and they will never have stab because, again, everything is grass type. Any secondary effects from these moves will also always have a chance to take effect, and the move Leech Seed will never have any effect. We make it out of Viridian Forest with Daisy at level 6, Pepper at level 10, and Flytrap at level 9 and I decide that now is the perfect time to fight the junior trainer. I'm trying to switch train Daisy at this point, and you know what, that probably wasn't the best idea. His Diglett knocks out Flytrap in three hits, and then I send in Daisy for some experience gains, and his Sandshrew crits Pepper twice in a row, knocking it out. And Sandshrew just has to touch Daisy and she falls. So that was our first loss. What an incredible showing on my part. Yeah, I go train a little bit more and get Daisy evolved and leveled up before taking on the junior trainer again, purely for my dignity. Diglett once again knocks out Flytrap in three hits, and then after Pepper knocks it out, I switch in Daisy for experience, and Sandshrew does not crit on Pepper, allowing me this incredible victory. But I mean, seeing as how that shouldn't really be considered an accomplishment in the first place, I go train some more before Brock. And it's in Viridian Forest we get this neat little interaction. Since everything is grass type, Thundershock does really low damage to Spearow, while Spearow's pet does massive damage to Pikachu. Not something I thought I would ever say. Anyways, we get Daisy to level 10 and evolved into Beedrill, Flytrap is level 10, and Pepper is level 12. And it's time now to face Brock. I send Pepper out first because, you know what, I'll have plenty of time to train after Brock, Let's just get past this gym first. Pepper knocks Geodude out in three hits and knocks Onyx out in three hits as well, earning us the Boulder Badge and a very easy win. I make my way through Mount Moon after facing some Zubat and let me tell you, they're a little bit of a threat with those Leech Life. Anyways, I make it to Cerulean City where I fight this swimmer for the XP. I remember the junior trainer has a Goldeen that knows Peck and I decide to train up a bit more to the west of Cerulean and then face our rival, Pollution. I send out Flytrap to try to counter his flying plant, but unfortunately Pidgeotto uses several send attacks and Flytrap just can't seem to accurately peck 
and goes down. Pidgeotto gets one sand attack off on Daisy before going down. Abra goes down in two hits with its pitiful, pitiful defense. Daisy gets a critical hit fury attack off on Rattata, and then I swap into Pepper to take out rival Squirtle with a few embers. Overall, that was a pretty easy fight. Flytrap can't one-shot anything right now, and it might seem like it's struggling against some of these battles, but believe me, it'll be worth it later on. After going back to the gym and winning against the junior trainer, it's now time to battle Misty. I send out Flytrap first, and this time, instead of spamming attacks, I set up three Leers before going for a couple of pecks and knocking the lead Staryu out. Starmie comes out and tackles Flytrap once, knocking it out. And you may have noticed Staryu only used Tackle, and Starmie is only using Tackle because Misty has good AI, not allowing her to use any of her Water-type moves. Daisy manages to get a Poison off on Misty's Ace Starmie and some chip damage before going down to Starmie, and I send Pepper out to easily finish it off, earning us the Cascade Badge. After our win, we head up to Bill's, help him with his problems, and get the SSN ticket before heading down to Vermilion City. But before we can even get out of Cerulean, Flytrap evolves to my surprise! I guess that shows how often I use Spearow, because honestly, I had no idea at what level it would evolve. Anyways, I get down to Vermilion where Daisley finally learns its best attacking move, Tween Needle, and oh boy, was this an upgrade, and so much better than Fury Attack. I go to the big cruise ship at the dock and battle a whole bunch of trainers for that sweet, sweet XP before taking on SSN Rival. I send out Daisy because, of course I do, Twin Needle puts in the work and his whole team falls to me spamming A. The SSN captain conveniently waits until I'm standing at a safe distance away from the ship before backing up into the sea. I go catch an Oddish that I name... Plant. And then it's time to take on Lieutenant Surge. I send out Pepper and he sends out Voltorb. He has the opportunity to deal some good damage with Sonic Boom and uses it once, but doesn't do anything else and goes down to a few embers. Pikachu does some chip damage, but ultimately falls to a couple of embers, and then Lieutenant sends out his Ace Raichu. Raichu goes for its signature Thunderbolt, which does pitiful damage, and Pepper gets a burn off on Raichu. I switch into Flytrap, use a few Leers to counteract the Growls from Raichu, and finish Lieutenant Surge off, earning the Thunder Badge. Heading up to Rock Tunnel, I find the Junior Trainer with the two Oddish and two Bell Sprout, and here I learn that Spore moves actually do affect my Grass-type team. It's just Leech Seed that doesn't affect them. I didn't know that going into it. Grass-types don't gain immunity against these types of moves until, like, Generation 6, so I'm not sure why I thought that I was immune now, but oh well. Once we get past Erica, we won't have too many other trainers using those moves anyways. Making our way easily through and out of Rock Tunnel, I enter Lavender Town and immediately face Rival Pollution. He, of course, sends out Pidgeotto first, and I counter with Pepper. Ember isn't doing much, but luckily Pidgeotto's sand attack misses. I don't mind the chip damage it gets off with Gust and Quick Attack as long as my accuracy stays untouched, and Ember takes it out in four hits. Pepper levels up and Pollution sends out Growlithe, which has the potential to be scary. Pepper's Ember burns Growlithe, which goes for his own Ember, doing not insignificant damage. A couple of Embers later, Pepper takes Growlithe out, but Pepper's at about a quarter health, so I switch in Flytrap. We avoid a scary hypnosis and deal some pretty good damage to execute. It retaliates with Barrage that does basically nothing, and after a couple of turns, we take it out. Kadabra goes down to a single peck, no surprise there, and Pollution sends out War Turtle. I send out Daisy just to change up the battle a little bit and spread out the sweet, sweet XP. War Turtle hits with a bite, and Daisy hits with some Twin Needle. Then War Turtle misses two Twelve Whips in a row. Two Twelve Whips in a row. <laughs> Two tail whips in a row, earning us an easy win against the Lavender Rival. I'm leaving it in there. I make my way to Saladon, picking up Fly while I'm here, a Poke Doll, and a Water for the guards. I decide not to pick up Eevee yet. Jolteon can learn Pin Missile, but I mean, as much as I would like it to work for the memes, we all know that's not really a viable strategy. And Flareon isn't really that great. Overall, not huge additions to the team, so I skip Eevee for this run. Getting back to Lavender Town, these ghost types should all be incredibly easy with their really low defense stats, but we all know how my luck goes in battles that should be easy. This Ghastly paralyzes Flytrap with a turn one lick, then confuses it next turn. Flytrap then hits itself three times in a row with a Nightshade thrown in there. Thanks, Ghastly. This Ghastly is legit only one hit away from feigning. So I swap in Daisy, and Ghastly goes for another Confuse Ray, confusing Daisy on swap in, and Daisy, of course, hits itself in confusion. Because, I mean, why wouldn't it? Luckily, Daisy hits through the next confusion, dealing the final blow to this impromptu Ghastly boss. 
And then pretty much the same thing happens fighting this rocket with his Zubat and Golbat team. But you know what? I have mirror moves, so take that, punk. Golbat hits itself in confusion, but then immediately snaps out, gets off a screech. Flytrap hurts itself a lot. Daisy gets knocked out. Golbat's so dumb. But Pepper finally takes out the confusing Golbat. Thankfully, the other two rockets present no issue, and we manage to clear Lavender Tower, get the Pokey Flute from Mr. Fuji, and start making our way back to Celadon's gym, taking on the trainers to the west of Lavender for some XP. After taking on all those trainers and then defeating all the trainers in Erica's gym, our team is at level 28 and 29, and it's time to challenge Erica. She of course leads with Victory Bell and I send out Flytrap. Flytrap's peck doesn't hit quite as hard as I was hoping for and then gets poisoned which is not great as we'll see. Flytrap's next pet crits and does good damage and Victory Bell goes for Rap. Poison damage ticks with each hit of Rap doing massive damage to Flytrap. But eventually Flytrap gets out and pecks Victory Bell knocking it out and gaining a level. I swap in Daisy to handle Tangela, and Tweedle also doesn't do near as much damage as I was hoping for, but luckily Tangela can't do much to us, and it goes down after a Super Potion and a few more Twin Needle. Vile Plume is next, and we actually get a poison off on Vile Plume. There's a 20% chance to poison on the second hit of Twin Needle. Vile Plume in turns poison Daisy, and I swap into Pepper to hopefully finish it off. And after a few turns back and forth, Pepper does just that, and we earn the Rainbow Badge. I sneak my way onto Cycling Road, steal someone's bike, get this rare candy I always miss, and make my way down to Fuchsia City. Safari Zone goes as expected, I catch a Parasect just out of opportunity, naming it Shroom, get the Gold Teeth and Surf, and then catch a Venomoth, naming it Nightshade, after the Nightshade family that includes things like tomatoes. I was looking that up a few days before doing this run, I'm not sure why it popped into my head at that point, I think I was just trying to be edgy. But anyways, still when I get a fly user, I head to the west of Fuchsia and pick up a Doduo that I name Cherry. And then I try to take on Koga's gym. And I don't think my team's ready yet because the first trainer's Hypno just kind of wipes my team with grace and ease. So forget that, we're just going to fight Team Rocket. I head up a Saffron and start fighting all the trainers I possibly can for that sweet, sweet XP. And it's not just so that my team can be a higher level. I'm still using moves on Flytrap and Pepper that were in their moveset since the very beginning of the run, and they desperately need upgrades. I could teach Fly to Flytrap, but that's an HM, so I can't unlearn it, and it's really not that great of a move, so I'm holding out on Drill Peck for Flytrap. Pepper! I never can remember at what level the Charmander line learns better fire type moves, but at this point in the run, I'm hoping it's soon. It's not. As we're battling Team Rocket in Sylph, Beedrill learns Pin Missile, and I was interested to see if it would be a better option from Twin Needle, and it turns out it's not. It has lower accuracy, and it has to hit at least four times to do more damage than Twin Needle, which is only a 25% chance. And it doesn't poison, so yeah, we're still using Twin Needle, yay. But on a better note, Mirror Move is so good in these types of runs. If anything hits you for super effective damage, you can send it right back to them, and that's pretty awesome, especially for the levels where Flytrap doesn't know Drill Peck yet. But finally, after fighting so many Rocket Grunts, Flytrap learns Drill Peck, a base 160 power move in this run. This is such a game changer. Flytrap can finally one-shot some of these more annoying Pokemon like the stupid Golbat. And then I pick up TMO3 Sword Stance. And yeah, I teach it to Daisy. We're about to wreck everything in this game with a Beedrill. So of course I want to try it out, and I send Daisy out against the Scientist, who sends Electrode out. They use a self-destruct and one-shots Daisy. Okay, so maybe Daisy won't just wreck everything in the game, but at least with Sword Stance, it is a viable contender. Maybe. We try again with this Team Rocket Grunt, setting up two Sword Stance before two-shotting both Weezing and Golbat. So, I mean, Daisy's holding her own, and then she levels up and learns Agility, meaning I can boost Attack with Sword Stance and then badge boost it even higher. Beedrill is one of my favorite Pokemon, so it's pretty exciting to see what it can do when everything is tipped in its favor. So with all the grunts beaten in Self Company and my team at level 35, it's time to fight Self Rival. He sends out Pidgeot and I send out Daisy. I want to go for the setup, but I couldn't remember if Pidgeot had Wing Attack, which it does, unfortunately, so that didn't work. It's crazy to see that Pidgeot went from being the weakest pushover imaginable in his team in the Rock type run to being the scariest member of his team now. Anyways, Pepper takes it down with an Ember and we're back in it. And I forgot about Growlithe, it's, it's pretty scary too. We trade a few Embers, both getting crits, but then Pepper hangs on with one HP and knocks the Growlithe out. 
I swap into Flytrap against the Execute, Drill Peck does its thing, knocking it out in a few turns. Alagazam is a one shot, no surprise there. I had Mirror moved Execute's Reflect, which helped negate some of the damage from Blastoise Bite, allowing us an easy finish against Sylph Rival. Next up is Giovanni, and once again, I'm going for the Daisy strat. I set up with three sword stances and three agilities, maxing out Daisy's attack as high as I could possibly get it. Luckily, none of Nidorino's poison stings poison, and we're able to one-shot it with Twin Needle. Kangaskhan is a two-shot, narrowly hanging on with just a sliver of health, and then we see the only problem with this, getting a critical hit. But you can also see just how little a normal Twin Needle would be doing, and that was a critical, so it'd actually be doing around half of that. Anyways, Rhyhorn goes down to the next Twin Needle, and Nidoqueen Queen plays nice and is a two-shot. Or one-shot, however you want to look at it. it. I guess it was a one-turn. Anyways, Giovanni falls to the B, and we've completed Sylph Company. I backtrack and pick up Lapras for our surfing friend, naming it Water Lily. After beating Sylph, I decide to fight the trainers in the fighting dojo, where we get some sweet, sweet XP, and Pepper evolves into Charizard, and it still doesn't have Flamethrower, completing the team. I then fly down to Fuchsia and try to take on Koga's gym again, and I forget we didn't beat this guy, but our rematch goes so much better than before, so that's a very good sign. And after fighting all the trainer as Jim, it's time to take on Koga. He sends out Coughing, as he does, and I send out Daisy going for the Daisy strats. Turn 1, we both boost our attack stats, and then turn 2, Coughing lands a sludge that, of course, poisons. I go for Twin Needle, I get a crit with it, which we're only plus 2 on attack, so I'm not sure if there's really much of a difference. But anyways, Coughing takes Daisy down to 3 HP, I use a full restore, luckily I had one, and not Coughing out next turn. I go for another sword stance against Muck, taking over half health from Sludge, and get another critical hit, which did matter because Daisy is at plus four now. Luckily, Muck goes for and misses a poison gas, and the next Twin Needle knocks it out. Coughing plays nice and goes down in two hits, and Weezing survives on a sliver of health, but doesn't take advantage of it and uses Toxic. So Daisy finishes it off, earning us a soul badge. And yeah, I probably could have had an easy time spamming Drill Pack or Ember, but I mean, come on, using Beedrill is funny. All right, going back to Saffron again to take on Sabrina's gym. I, of course, fight all the trainers in her gym and learn that Drill Peck one-shots Haunter, which makes sense, but it is pretty cool to confirm. And after beating everyone in the gym, we take on Sabrina. She sends out Kadabra and I send out Daisy. Kadabra does some pretty good damage to Daisy and I didn't want it to crit me, so I took it down after using only one sword stance. I was hoping I could set up against her Mr. Mime, but it goes for confusion, confuses Daisy, and then Daisy knocks herself out, imagine that. So I send out Pepper to help out and clean up, and Pepper has a pretty easy fight, three-shotting Mr. Mime with Ember, two-shotting Venomoth with Slash, and two-shotting Alagazam with Slash, earning us the Marsh Badge and getting Pepper a level up. I head back to Pallet Town to surf the Cinnabar, and at this point, I was seriously considering catching a Tentacle for the team as a backup special attacker and having access to Defense Boosting Barrier, but I decided against it and just beeline to Cinnabar. Grabbing the key from the mansion, beating every trainer in the gym, and having Daisy at the front of the team, which is probably a bad idea, we're ready to face Blaine. Blaine sends out Growlithe, and I send out Daisy, and start setting up Sword Stance. Growlithe's Ember is doing a little less than a quarter, which is really good for us. After two Sword Stances, Daisy starts her attack run, one shot in the Growlithe, then two shot in the Ponyta with a critical hit. Then Daisy gets another unlucky critical against Rapidash, which retaliates with the Fire Spin, taking Daisy down to 44 HP. I don't get a crit against Arcanine, but Twin Needle just doesn't do enough damage, and Arcanine takes Daisy out with a Fire Blast. One of these days, Daisy will sweep someone. One of these days. I send Flytrap out to clean up, and we earn the Volcano Badge and get the Fire Blast TM. And with the first seven Kanto Badges earned, it's time we head to Viridian City Gym and start taking on those trainers. And I go ahead and teach Fire Blast to Pepper because I'm tired of using Ember. Now, with all the trainers defeated in the Viridian Gym, it's time to take on this last trainer that I always miss, and Flytrap levels up and learns Agility, which is very nice because now we can Badge Boost Flytrap's attack too. And now, with actually all the trainers defeated in the Viridian Gym, it's time to take on Giovanni. Giovanni sends out Rhyhorn, and I send out Daisy, because surely Daisy strats will work this time. 
I set up a sword stance, fury attack misses me. I use another sword stance, tail whip doesn't matter, it just boosts my stats more. Third sword stance, Giovanni uses a guard spec, I use agility, fury attack hits doing 33 total damage, I use another agility, horn drill of course misses, I swear Giovanni wants to see the daisy sweep happen too. Twin needle, two hits Rhyhorn, one shot Dugdrio, level up hurts a little bit but we still have sword stance boost, two hits Nitto Queen, Two hits Nido King and an unlucky crit against Rhydon, but it goes for Tail Whip and Daisy knocks out the Rhydon, getting the Daisy Sweep and earning us the Earth Badge. That's my B drill. Let's go. All right, with the gym challenge done, let's move on to Rival. He sends out Pidgeot, which goes down to a critical hit Fire Blast from Pepper. I use Ember on Rhyhorn to conserve power points, getting a two hit. Growlithe is a two hit with Slash, doing very little damage with its Ember. Execute is a one hit with Fire Blast, Alakazam outspeeds and gets Pepper down to half HP, and Slash does not get the one shot. Alakazam fires back with a Psychic, taking Pepper down to 20 health, but Slash finishes it off. And then Blastoise. Absolutely tanks a Fire Blast. I swap into Flytrap while it sets up a Skull Bash. Flytrap takes some good damage from it, but it's able to out damage easily with Drill Peck, and we defeat Viridian Rival. Moving into Victory Road, Pepper finally learns Flamethrower against this rando trainer. Such a huge upgrade. We make it out of Victory Road without Innocent. We're at an okay level for everything. Flytrap is at level 45. Pepper and Daisy are both at level 46. So here we go, the Elite Four. Lorelai is up first and she sends out her level 54 Dugong. Pepper's Flamethrower does pretty good damage against Dugong, albeit with a crit, but Dugong's Aurora Beam does almost half. This doesn't look very good. A second Flamethrower knocks it out and Lorelai sends out Cloyster next. I go for a Fire Blast hoping for a one hit, but we're pretty far off from it and Cloyster hits back with its own Aurora Beam. The crits knocking Pepper out. I send out Daisy for a Twin Needle to try to get a poison off, but Cloyster's defense is really good and easily tanks it. And then Lorelai uses a Super Potion and uses Aura Beam next turn, which crits knocking Daisy out. I send Flytrap out that gets a crit with Drill Peck, knocking out Cloyster, but we still have three more Pokemon to get through on her team. I tend to set up against Slowbro, but it has ground negating some of my attack boost, which is really annoying. I managed to knock Slowbro out and then Jinx taking some massive damage from two Ice Punches, but Lapras finishes Flytrap off with a Blizzard. So yeah, I mean, we are about 10 levels under Lorelei's team, so I think it's a safe to say we need to do some leveling up. So after raising up the team a few levels, getting Flytrap and Daisy to level 51 and Pepper to level 52, I think it's time to try the Elite Four again. All right, Lorelei take two. I decide to send out Flytrap first to take advantage of Dugong's slightly lower defense stat compared to its special stat. Setting up one agility, Dugong's Aurora Beam does just under half. Flytrap gets a crit, leaving just a sliver of health on Dugong, but Lorelei wastes a turn healing and Flytrap is able to finish it off with another Drill Peck. Cloyster is up next and Drill Peck does more damage than I thought it would, but not enough, and Cloyster knocks out Flytrap with two Aura War Beams. I send out Pepper to play off Cloyster's relatively low special stat and knock it out without issue. Slowbro's next, Pepper gets a crit with Fire Blast and Slowbro uses Amnesia, which is perfectly fine for us because Pepper finished it off with a Slash the very next turn. Jinx goes down to two slashes. I probably should have used Fire Blast, but Slash got the job done and Pepper still has over half of her health. But then Pepper misses a Fire Blast against Lapras, which hits a critical blizzard, knocking Pepper out. Daisy, can you do it? I have to go for Sword Stance, otherwise Twin Needle won't do near enough damage, but Lapras lands two blizzards on Daisy, knocking her out. I think we had that battle won, we just lost to bad accuracy luck. So I run it back, getting through her first four Pokemon, and they all go down about the same way as last time. I do try Fire Blast on Jinx, and it actually does a little less damage than the Critical Slash. Lorelei sends Lapras out and Pepper's Fire Blast hits this time, and Lapras misses Blizzard. A second Fire Blast gets Lapras down to a sliver, but Lorelei wastes a turn on healing and Pepper finishes off the Lapras with a Flamethrower. We finally beat Lorelei, and I think the rest of the Elite Four should be pretty smooth sailing. Bruno is up next, and you know what? It's time for Daisy to shine again. Three Swords dances in, Onyx is a two hit, Hitmonchan is a two hit, Hitmonlee is a one hit, Onyx, well, we get a crit against Onyx, but it can't do much anyways, and Machamp is a two hit. I love Beedrill so much. Bruno is down and we're moving on. 
Agatha is next, and I'm putting everything on Flytrap's high attack and speed. Flytrap actually outspeeds the first Gengar and one hits with a crit, so things are looking pretty good. Drill Peck does about three quarters to Golbat, which goes for Coin Flip, Supersonic, that hits, because of course it does, and Flytrap hits itself, because of course it does. I then go for Mirror Move just to show off, but don't get the knockout with Wing Attack. Luckily for us, Golbat goes for Haze, getting rid of Confusion, and we knock it out. We outspeed Haunter and one shot with Drill Peck. We get a lucky crit on Arbok. I do not think we would have one shot otherwise. Her Ace Gengar is up and we outspeed it and get it down to about a quarter of health and it goes for Dream Eater and we finish it off beating Agatha. Flytrap putting in the work. Now it's Lance time. And you know how I always say that I underestimate Gyarados in literally every single run that I ever do? Yeah, I did it again. I sent Daisy out to set up against Gyarados because I knew it wouldn't use Hydro Pump, so it had to use either Leer, Dragon Rage, or Hyper Beam. But I really underestimated Hyper Beam's power. It also doesn't help that I'm using all fast attackers on my team, and I don't really have anything that can take the hit. Gyarados knocks Daisy out with a Hyper Beam, then crits on Flytrap and knocks it out with another Hyper Beam. It gets a Dragon Rage off on Pepper before Flamethrower finally takes it out. Fire Blast one-shots his first Dragonair, but I'm out of power points on it, so I switched to Flamethrower. It does good damage against this next Dragonair, but it hits with Hyper Beam as well, taking out Pepper. That hurt. It did not even occur to me just how little defense I had on my team when I was raising these Pokemon up. I really could be using Lapras or Tentacruel or even Snorlax right now, but part of it, I think, is luck. I mean, Lance was really spamming Hyper Beam, and he has several other moves on his Pokemon that they can use. So I take that loss with the XP from the previous battles. Since I didn't use any items or rare candy, I don't reset. We're just going to run it back. Lance round two. I send Flytrap out against his Gyarados, hoping to get knocked out with a couple of Drill Packs before it can do much. But it lands a turn one critical hit Hyper Beam on Flytrap, knocking it out. I attempt to set up with Daisy, but it knocks her out with a Hyper Beam as well. Pepper comes out and knocks out the Gyarados with two Slashes, then knocks out the first Dragonair with two Flamethrowers, and knocks out the second Dragonair with a Fire Blast. But then Aerodactyl comes out and knocks out Pepper with a Hyper Beam. We are so incredibly close. Those Hyper Beams are just so brutal. But again, I didn't use any items or rare candies, so I don't reset. We're just going to run it back again. And speaking of rare candies, I decide it's probably time to use them. After I beat Agatha this time around, I level up Flytrap to level 58, and Pepper and Daisy both to level 57. And now... Third time's a charm? I send out Flytrap against his Gyarados. I think knocking it out as quick as possible is still the play here. It gets a Hyper Beam off on Flytrap, but does not crit, so Flytrap knocks it out next turn. Dragonair 1 hangs on with a little sliver, but then gets hit with a crit and goes down. Dragonair 2 goes down to a single Drill Peck. Aerodactyl misses with a Supersonic, and Drill Peck does good damage, but then Aerodactyl hits Hyper Beam, knocking out Flytrap. But we're doing a lot better than last time. I think we're good. I think we're good. Pepper knocks out Aerodactyl with a Flamethrower, lands a Fire Blast on Lance's Dragonite, and gets a Burn Off. And Dragonite goes for Barrier. Pepper knocks out Dragonite with a Flamethrower, and we are past Lance. One battle to go. Okay, champion fight, let's go. I send Pepper out as a counter to Pollution's Pidgeot. Fire Blast doesn't quite get the one hit, but Pidgeot goes for Sky Attack, giving Pepper another turn to knock it out with Flamethrower. Alakazam comes out, and we actually outspeed it this time, but again, don't quite get the one hit. Alakazam crits with a side beam, taking Pepper down to half before Pepper finishes it off with a second slash. And then Pollution sends out Rhydon. And you know what? We're, we're doing it. Daisy strats. I swap into Daisy, taking a Fury Attack before being able to get off a Sword Stance. Rhydon hits another Fury Attack and then just lets Daisy set up with two more Sword Stance and two Agilities before landing a Twin Needle that crits. What a letdown after so much buildup. But the next Twin Needle takes it out. Arcanine is a two hit. Executor should be a two hit, but we get another unlucky crit and get put to sleep. I use a full restore and Executor tries to go for another Hypnosis, but thankfully misses. But then we get another crit. Come on. Stomp does okay damage to us and we finally knock it out. And here we go. Blastoise. We don't crit and Blastoise is an easy to hit. Daisy strats for the win. We beat champion with a Beedrill and that's Pokemon Red when everything is a grass type. So... 
How easy is Pokemon Red if every Pokemon in the game is a Monograss type? Well, the beginning game was easy enough and straightforward, but not nearly as easy as Rock Only. That being said, it really only got difficult towards the end of the game in the Elite Four area. But part of that difficulty was because I was first of all using a Beedrill, and my team was made up of all fast attackers. So I think I'm going to have to rate Grass Type in the middle of the road. It wasn't hard by any means, but relative to Rock Type only, it was more difficult. And as I've said before, this placement is subject to change as I complete more runs of different types and get a feeling for how they all play out. Thank you so much for watching, it really means the world to me. If you're interested in more of these kind of videos, be sure to subscribe and check out the run I did where every Pokemon was rock type, I'll put the link in the description below. This series will continue on and next up is Pokemon Red, but everything is electric type, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. I think I'm going to keep up the little challenge of using underutilized Pokemon on team, like Beedrill and Mankey, just to keep things a little more interesting. Who knows what I'll use the Daisy Strat next. Anyways, thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.